Welcome folks to Clunkers and Classics. We're gonna get a little work done in the garage today. Keep these cats out of here. Come on. Um, okay, so last episode we're kind of piecing the front end together, making sure everything fits. I'm uh, about to take off the uh, header panel grill and front valance piece and that fender. I just kind of got them sitting on there with a couple of bolts. And we're going to strip down and fix this dent here. Straighten out the valance panel. Straighten out the grill. Um, and we're going to make a patch panel for the bottom of this fender. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do because it's just uh, rainy and cold. Um, waiting on the uh, spacers for the ball joints. They should be here. Uh, they won't be here for another two days. And we'll, we'll get that on this video and then hopefully piece all this front end and get all the front end together. And maybe do some other work. But that's the plan. So let me get these pieces off here, set them out in the garage here, and start working on them. I'll be back. Okay, guys, first thing I'm going to do is try to fix this grill. See here, it's all, it's all bent in. And, uh, I'm trying to keep the cats out of here. Uh... So I took this emblem off here that's all bent up, and uh, I don't think I'm going to put that back on, so I don't have the matching rear one. Uh, thinking about putting an SS grill on here, and uh, but the correct one would say SS396, which I don't want. When I did my 69 Chevelle, I just bought an SS emblem from like a nova or something that didn't have it uh, not 396 on there so okay the main thing is this it's got it got hit right here somehow and that's what's dented up the header which i'll show here in a little bit so i'm going to get a couple of pieces of two by four in here try to straighten this out and then try to straighten this grill here out. Uh, new grill's 200 bucks. I don't really want to spend 200 bucks. And then I may uh, leave this chrome, but paint all this here uh, flat black, satin black. Okay, kind of. I don't know if there's some black in there or not. Maybe a little bit. I think maybe. I think maybe the headlight trim things were black, but. Anyway, uh, I'll be back. Okay, guys, I got that this grill here banged out pretty good. Rub, put some steel wool on it. Uh, yeah, that's where it was bent up. It was actually bent up over here, too, a little bit. Anyway, that's about the best I can do. Uh, I might paint that in the middle black. Not sure yet. Uh, okay, I got this header panel stripped down. Uh, this was the main dent right in here. I banged it out a little bit. Had to put a little body filler. Well, it'll probably be all in here, a little skim. But it was also... There was a dent right here, and then there was a crease right along here. So I got to skim that, skim that, and then the old, the only old bondo that was in it was right there, a little dent. And I think that's about it. Maybe a little bit right there. So anyway, I'm going to uh, put a little body filler on that. And then uh, go to strip this filler panel here. Okay, I'll be back. Feeding time at the zoo. 
Okay, guys, I got those uh, ball joint spacers in. We're going to uh, attempt to fix this problem. Okay, I got a little Bondo in the header panel. I'm going to sand that down and probably have to put another little skim here. And uh, just kind of banging this around, sanding a little bit. We'll get that sanded down, primed, and painted. Same with that. Okay, so... They're not as big as I thought they were going to be. They never did say... Uh, what size they were in the eBay listing. So I don't know. I don't know if I got a tape measure handy, but... Anyway, those are the spacers that go in between the ball joint, with, uh, between the A-frame and the spindle. So we're going to try it, what the auction had said. Uh, lifetime warranty made out of a billet aluminum. They're anodized so they won't rust. Allows 6 inches rise of the front end under hard acceleration for maximum weight transfer to the rear wheels. I guess that's for racing uh, provides longer travel in the front suspension without altering ride height now that's what we need right there okay so yeah somebody commented and I don't know what it was some racing channel some couple of guys working in a the garage they had these taller ball joints I can't find them anywhere for sale I guess I could probably they mentioned the name of them I guess I could probably try to look them up but, like I said, when I was looking for them, I found these, these spacers advertised. So, uh, we're going to give it a shot. They come with the uh, longer bolts and nuts and everything like that. And... So... If you're new, this I bought this whole A-frame disc brake conversion, spindles, everything uh, as one unit. And these A-frames, from what I can gather, the A-frames, top A-frames are wrong for this. When I looked on eBay for other A-frames, single, like not the whole set, uh most places advertise 64 to 67 then 68 to 72 and this is 68 pirate jack said this kit was for 64 to 72 and obviously it's not what the difference is is the top a frames so far that i can tell the bottom a frames look to be okay uh i changed i bought new springs i think they were moog springs um and they were the exact same size as the old ones. So it's not the spring length or anything. Uh, I doubt it's the bottom A frame. Uh, it has to be it has to be this top one. Now somebody commented about the spindle. Maybe the spindle's too short. Well, we'll measure it here in a little bit. Uh, I got my old Let's see, here's the factory a frame and and this is where that that stopper is to hit the frame whereas let me grab those other ones this other set I bought a while back did uh didn't come complete I bought four a frames and only two came and they refunded my money and told me to keep these ones these ones are the exact same as what pirate jack sold me so i don't it, it's kind of it's kind of hard to tell uh but see this this is too far down this touches the frame where it needs it needs this much room here between the ball joint 
Okay, so I could use a tape measure, but I can just tell by looking at it that uh, it's it's there's there's no there's hardly any any space there. So hopefully these spacers work. The only thing I was worried about was the, uh, oh, okay, there's the grease fitting. I was thinking it was on the side. Okay, so you can still grease them. So, they're going to go on here, and the ball joint's going to go on top of this. See? So that should give it enough height. It should give it way more height. Like I said, I could use my tape measure, but uh, and measure from here to the top of the ball joints, and then the same on that one, and then measure this. But I think this will work. Okay, so let me jack it up and take this wheel off. See, the problem was getting the bottom and lower uh, A-frames to connect to the spindle. That's why I had to use a come along across here and push this down, uh, squeeze them together so they could get on, get these bolts on there, nuts on there. And I, it might be kind of tough getting uh, getting them off without this thing just springing way up. But anyway, let me jack it up, get this wheel off, and I'll be back. Okay, guys, uh, the spindle is the exact same size as the factory one. From there to here, seven and a quarter. So is the factory one. Okay, so, yeah, we just got to undo this cotter pin and this uh, nut. But I'm afraid it's just going to fly up. Uh, I don't know. We'll find out. Because that's, like I said, I had to squish these two together just to fit onto this spindle. In fact, on the other side, uh, the little rubber stopper there is crushed. Okay, so, um, okay, I measured from here to the bottom of the ball joint. With this, it'll be a half inch taller than factory, so it should work. We should see uh, quite a bit of difference before it hits the frame so it can travel. Just like I said, this is on the frame, so there's no travel. If you get it off the frame, then it then it can move. Okay, so let me take this uh, cotter pin and this bolt off here, and uh, we'll go from there. I'll be back. Okay, guys, I got it popped off there. Just goes in the top spindle hole, so these spacers will go go in the bottom of this and uh, we'll see so basically what the problem is is it's touching the frame see the stopper there is touching the frame and there's no there's no travel it should be hopefully with a spacer it should be up like that and what I'll also do after I put that on there so I'm going to go over to my Chevelle which is stock and measure the travel from the frame. See, the, this this is the part that must be different than the 64 to 67. I don't know, I'm not that uh, an expert on the 64 to 67, so uh, maybe they don't have this notch in there or something, I don't know. Or maybe they don't have this in there, I don't know. So, anyway, let me put that on there. It should be pretty simple. Just take out these four bolts. Put this on there with the uh, longer bolts. And uh, I'll be back. Okay, guys. There's a spacer on there. 
I got the ball joint in, the spindle. Okay, now you can see the distance here. Now I just measured on my Chevelle, the 69, and this has a little, I don't know if you can see that hole right there. That's there's a rubber bushing that's level, almost level with this. And then it's two and a half inches from here to the top of that. So I, I actually think this is about a half inch too long. This rubber stopper here. But I'll show you on the Chevelle. I don't know how good you can see. Uh, see, it's got a rubber stopper on the bottom here. And then from there to there is two and a half inches. So anyway, that one looks right, except the stopper looks looks a little too tall. So if it bottoms out on that stopper, I'll know what it is. But as far as the height, I think that's right. I think that's right. That's what it needed, was that spacer or... Uh, now the problem with a spacer, it only goes on... Um, see the four holes you can't turn it around that way you can turn it I don't know if I was showing it it only goes on that way either that way or that way and either way these two here are going to be longer than the back so that screwed into there, but this one barely came out, and then this one right on the edge, and that one came out. Anyway, these two kind of uh, just kind of stripped in there. They don't go all the way. They just kind of spin. Uh, so I might just put a little tack weld on here to keep them from backing off. They're the they got the little thread thing on there. Maybe I'll try to take them off and turn them around so that thread thing hits. But anyway, I think that's it. I'll put the wheel on it, jack it down, see how it is, see if it's got some spring to it, then do the other side. So I'll be back. Well, guys, I don't think these are going to work. See the A-frame hitting the rim. And it didn't, the ball joint didn't drop all the way down into the spindle. You can see here. It's it's angled all the way and it's just it's just basically bound up. It won't go the extra eighth of an inch. Uh what it needs, I'll show you on the other side. I thought this side was okay, and then... What they need is, uh... It needs the tall end on this side. And it, there, there's no way. See, these are... These are, uh... You know, too wide, too short. There's no way of, of flipping it around. I'm going to mess with it some more. But, uh, yeah, you can see here, that's as far down as it goes. It needs to go another eighth of an inch down in there. It's just, it's angled wrong. And this side here is actually uh, closer to the frame than the other side. Uh, could be because I got the jack in a different spot, but... Um, But yeah, I need that tall end on this side. And there, there's no way. I thought maybe you could flip them around or they send left and right or something, but 
I'll mess with it some more, but it looks like I'm going to have to buy the right A-frames. A-frames for the 68 to 72. And write Pirate Jack back and have them refund me. Partial refund for these upper A-frames because they're just not going to work. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys, I'm tired of screwing around. I'm going to return them upper ones to Pirate Jack and return them spacers that don't are angled wrong. I don't know what the hell they're for. Race application or something. So I went ahead and put on the factory one. Here's the one for the driver's side. Now, they're really not in bad shape. The only problem is the boot that was busted off here. I tore the rest of it off. Same with this side. But since I got an extra pair of those Chinese ones, I just took off and it's got a little uh, brace thing up there that's actually supposed to bolt into, into the bolts. Now, of course, this one's got rivets, so I'm not going to grind off all the rivets and put bolts in just to hold that little little cover. So, I don't know. It's It should be all right. I packed it full of grease. As you can see, all the grease coming out. Cleaned up the little nipple there. So, I'll do the same with this one. Um, but the ball joint itself is really good. It's not all rusted. It moves around. Well, it's re still really stiff. Nothing's broken. Usually stuff's broken in there. Uh, as far as these bushings here, uh, I'm not going to, I don't have a press to take them off. And I'm not about to. And they're, they're really, they're not bad either. I mean, they're in there. That's not metal against metal. Uh, that's pretty tight. Same with this side here. So I'm just going to leave them. Let's put the factory stuff on there. 54 year old stuff, but it's still, uh, well, it sat for 31, so it was on the road for, you know, 20 years or so. Uh, 23 years it was on the road, and they're still not worn out. Worn, but not worn out. The bushings, they're just a little cracked. So this is the driver's side. I'm going to put on the driver's side. No, anyway plenty of clearance in here now uh, the only thing is I had taken that rubber stopper that goes in the frame because of the Chinese ones had those those ones in the a-frame and I don't know what that pirate jack uh, I looked at a bunch of eBay sellers today on uh, those a-frames those even those Chinese ones uh, tubular and they are different from 68 to 72. So why his, he advertises 64 to 72. It even says it here. And this is the number that I told you before in the last video about that number he wanted me to, to look up. Uh, yeah, if I can find it now. What the hell is it? It was it was right on the edge here. Well, oh, shit. It was like right in here, somewhere. Oh, right, there it is, right there. UCA 6472. So it's, it's not for uh, the Camaro. He thought, well, maybe I'll send you ones for a Camaro. No, these are what he's selling, and they do not fit 6872. That, I, I cut that down with a, with a deal, but I, I got those other A-frames. I'll stick the, uh, I'll stick the ball joint back in there and two good ones of them and then he can have them back if he wants them uh, they're just they're I guess they're 64 to 67 because all the other eBay sellers well most of them there are a couple like him that are advertising 64 to 72 but 90% of them are 68 to 72 so um, I, I can get it's uh, what is it cyber Monday today 
and uh, they're actually like 15% off. So the ones that were like 168 or like one, not, I think the cheapest I found was 149. So for 150 bucks, I can get another set that'll fit. Because Pirate Jack, he don't he don't sell. Uh, he said those are the only ones he's got for Chevelle, 64 to 72. Okay, so uh, I didn't want to wait another four or five days and screwing around, jacking this thing up and down, up and down, tires off and on. Uh, so I think the factory ones is going to be all right. It's all the factory stuff. I don't have to worry about the uh, cheap Chinese ball joint breaking here. Um, of course, I got to probably worry about them one. But I don't. I think it's all, It's always the top ones that break on those Chinese ones. And like I said in the other video, it's not the ball joint itself. It's the thread and the nut backing off and the cotter pin being weak and and the threads threads nut. And the cotter pin are all weak and it, they just all slide off and then the whole thing just flops so anyway i don't think i have to worry about this with the factory stuff uh i'll probably clean that up and paint it because i still gotta i gotta paint some i painted a little bit of this caliper i didn't realize it i should have painted it before i put it on but uh i'll put a little uh pour 15 on that and that i'm not going to take it back off to do underneath so I'll just paint around that and put it on the driver's side and I think that's it we'll move on to uh, I think we'll do the fuel system here uh, do a little work on the fuel tank okay so I'll be back okay guys I got them painted up let them dry and then put on the wheels and give it the bounce test this got a lot of room in between it and the frame the other side's not as much and it's probably because those springs aren't in the exact spot they should be and now i'm thinking that uh maybe these bottom control arms are uh different too they're off because i had a hell of a time putting them springs in there there's a little perch that it's supposed to mount on and it or slide on to and it just it just wouldn't but uh Anyway, I don't know if it starts banging around or something. Uh, gonna have to put on the original bottom A frames and uh, check them out. I don't know, maybe the ball joints and stuff are still good on it. That it should. Yeah, it's probably best to rebuild it. But anyway. That's it for now. It's going to be about 5 o'clock. So uh, back tomorrow and we'll finish off my fuel system there. Got a little plug for the one top vent thing. And then we're going to hook up the original gas tank to the uh, new gas tank. I got to take the, the new gas tank out and put a little uh, valve in there to put the gas in because the top ones won't work okay I'll be back tomorrow okay guys it's the next day uh, got the wheels on and jacked it down but uh we're, we're in the same same problem here there's just not enough space here it's almost touching the frame uh, you know those no springs are for wagons so I, I bought the ones for the wagon uh, but they're the same height. Now, no, the wagons are probably. I should probably. Yeah, here's here's the original front ones here. Let's see if we can. Now, were they for a, a regular Chevelle and a wagon if they're taller? I don't know. All I know is these were the original ones. Those are the new ones, and they were the same height. So, 
You know, I realize they're new and they're probably stiffer. But that's what it almost seems like. It almost seems like those springs need to be shorter. And then that would bring up the bring up this whole area here. Um I emailed to get the people with the spacers and I said those spacers aren't gonna work, they're angled wrong. And they're like, oh well we never had that problem, they should fit. Do you have any aftermarket parts on the suspension? So I, I didn't write them back. I didn't tell them that I had, I tried to fit them on the uh, tubular aftermarket ones. So I don't know whether I could put the spacers on this factory one. I still think it's gonna tilt up and hit the wheel. I don't know. But now I'm gonna have to grind out them studs. And uh, so I'm thinking about doing that, grinding them studs out, putting a spacer in with the ball joint, bolt it to this, and see if see if it raises it up. But yeah, I I I don't know. Unless them springs are in there so wrong. They may be. I I don't know. I had a hard time getting them springs in there. So it could be my fault, the, the, uh, the whole problem from the spring not mounting on the top of this right. But you couldn't get them on there. I'm thinking these, these bottom A-frames are wrong too. Because the pictures of the ones they advertise for 68 to 72, somebody else advertises, not Pirate Jack. It looked a little bit different angle where this perch is. I put them up side by side and they look different. So I think there is definitely a difference in the bottom A-frames as well as the top. So I, I may just have to start all over. Uh, unless I put on the factory bottom A-frames. But uh, I'm not going to... Uh, those bottom ball joints are a lot different than the top. Those bottom ones are pressed in there. These ones are bolted, riveted in. Uh... It's going to be a real pain in the ass. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'd have to send it out and cost a fortune for somebody to pop in a ball joint here and the uh, bushings and stuff on there. So that's that's why I bought the kit, because it's a lot easier. Bolt it in and be done with it. But now I'm getting all these problems here. So I may have to just start all over, order a set for a 68 to 72, and... Uh, And if that spring goes right in there, then I know that's the problem with the bottom A-frame. So I don't know. So right now I can try putting that spacer in there to compensate. I may do that. But I've already wasted an extra day working on this than I wanted to. And uh, wanted to get to the fuel system and do that. We may do that. I'll be I'll think about it. I'll be back. Okay, guys, I got it in. See, it looks okay there until you let it down. See, it's not touching the rim though. There, it's almost. And now the ball joint's all like this. So something's something's up. But yeah, it was a hell of a time getting this uh grinding and chiseling this thing off the off the control arm. But I got it. It's it there. So I don't know. But when you let it down it you know it traveled up. I mean, this bottom spring went up, so. It's just, it's just going to be real stiff. But this will be normal driving right here. I'm afraid that that's going to bind that ball joint up quite a bit. You know, whenever you hit a bump, it'll straighten out. But just driving like that, 
I don't know if that's going to be any good or not. I wanted to reuse this ball joint here, but I can't. It's too... There's no easy way of getting them rivets off there. Well, unless you do a lot of drilling. I just figure I'd grind them off and save it, but wasn't the case. Anyway, uh, I don't know whether I should grind the edge of this A-frame off or not, but... These aren't the rims that are going on it anyway. I'll wait till I get some rally rims, and if the rally rims are real close like that, or whatever rims I get, then I'll I'll cut it. Anyway, I'm gonna do the other side, and I'll be back. Okay, guys, this side here is uh, really screwed up. It's way into the wheel, and way uh, so there's there's something definitely wrong. The two springs are off, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna have to start over Get the correct a-frame sets and uh Redo that spring get the right spring compressor But anyway the day's going fast, so I'm gonna try to get this Get 76 degrees today, but it's gonna be 48 tomorrow, but sunny So I may be able to work tomorrow, but probably not just a couple hours in the afternoon Okay, so if you're new, I got two gas tanks in here. This one here is an aftermarket 15 gallon. Okay, and I got the truck from the donor truck LS. I got the uh, fuel pump and wiring, with the fuel gauge and the dash, and everything works. Uh, and then you can, you get a uh, inside the thing there you, you can uh, put the gas in that way so what I want to do is uh, I'll have to show you most of it when it's out but I need to take the gas tank out to put in these two little deals here it's got openings on top of the tank and I want to get gas from the original tank put into that tank so i had bought an elbow and uh it's too tall the 90 degree it comes way up here and it's no good it won't fit up against the floor so i didn't have enough of these uh i plugged them off but uh this here's the correct cap so i need to take it off put this on top plug that off and then I get a drill in the side of the of the tank and put in this deal here and then this we're gonna run a gas line from here to a fuel pump to the uh, original tank so I got to drill a hole that big to stick in there that's the only way I can think of to get the gas inside the new tank so it's got to come out Okay, so I built built these two straps here, two bolts there, two bolts here. I gotta probably redo this, and uh, it it'll drop right down. And then we're gonna. This is the line. Uh, yeah, right here. So we're gonna we're gonna mount a fuel pump right in here somewhere. Could put it on here or here, don't matter. And uh, we're gonna run this line here from this tank into the fuel pump, and then we're gonna mount that little deal right, right about in here somewhere. Put that in so we can plug a line to it. And here's the lines to the fuel pump and everything. I already got all these routed down through here, but I'll probably have to undo oh well, maybe not we'll see I gotta get it down enough to get out that fuel pump take that fuel pump out of there to get at this hole and put a nut on the end of that so anyway let me take these bolts off and drop her down and uh, we'll go from there okay guys I dropped the tank down 
pretty easy. Uh, yeah, it's going to be easy to take in and out if I have to, you know, change a fuel pump or anything like that. Okay. So the original plan was to put a 90 degree elbow here and run it, run the line out so I could, with, to the fuel pump to, to get the gas from the other tank into this one through one of these holes. But the 90 degree comes up to about here and uh, it's no good because this is this right here these two pieces of styrofoam is what hits the bottom of the floor so I can't I couldn't have it sticking down another couple inches so I only had two at the time that I installed this so I just kind of stuck a cap on here kind of what came with it It'd probably be alright but um, so anyway so what I wanted to do was stick the right cap on there, just like them two, tighten that up, and be done with that. This has got all the vents and the gas going in, return line, don't need any of this. Okay, so the only way to get the gas in that I can figure out is, to, is right in here somewhere. But, so I'm going to have to take this fuel pump out, pull it out. And then uh, get in there with a wet, that's still got half tank of gas in it. Um, and drill a hole to put this in and just have that sticking out like that. See, I can't, I can't have it up there because I gotta get the, I gotta get the fuel line in. So that's the, about the best spot I could figure is probably right in there somewhere. Okay, so uh, I'll be back when I get this done. Okay guys, there's this in there, that cap on there tightened up, um, and there's the fuel pump, if I ever need a fuel pump, 2001 Silverado, no custom stuff, won't be stuck on the side of the road trying to overnight a package from Holly or something, any parts store will have that in stock. Okay, so let me put all this back together, stick it up back in there, and uh, we'll go from there okay guys I had some of this packing material it's pretty uh, sturdy thick foam and I put that on top of the gas tank even though I had those other styrofoam and she's in there tight because I those straps ended up being a little bit too loose but man it is so tight now that I don't have to use no straps or anything so those are done okay so here's the line here oops right there these are air shock lines okay so I got this fuel pump here uh, I, I can't remember names guys but uh a guy I remember he sent me the El Camino taillight too, and a gas gauge, some fuel filters, and a fuel pump. But I'll definitely use this for something. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's got all the clamps and everything. But I bought this one. I forget what the ad on eBay said. Uh, it's supposed to be really good and all that. And it wasn't the cheapest. You can get these as little as ten bucks. This one's about twenty-five. But anyway, we're going to. Uh, this is coming from the from the uh, factory tank. We're going to put that. Flow's going to go that way. So that goes into the fuel filter, and we're going to mount that. We're gonna mount that in here somewhere, and then it'll go from there up to there and then we'll uh we'll figure out what we're going to do for the wiring but let me get let me get these on there first and then we'll uh ground it and and test it well i want to put about a couple of gallons in here and then uh just put a battery down here and test it 
before I run all the wires and everything. And make sure that this tank doesn't leak. Because I did fix it. And it's been fixed before. But I don't think it'll leak. Um, but anyway, I don't need this tank for anything. This is 15 gallons. This will probably be good enough. But I don't know. Maybe even float on the Alaskan Highway or something. In, and it's far between stops. Anyway, this is 20 gallon. And this is 15. So it's 35 gallons altogether. Uh, if I get 25 miles to the gallon, I think it's 875 mile range. We can half in this thing. Uh, but anyway, it'll just be a little easier putting the gas in here. I don't even know if you're new. I'll show you how it put gas in. It'll just be easier putting gas in here than rolling this. I hope it lined up right. Yeah. Right here. That's how you fill this up. And any gas pump fits in there. So instead of doing all this to put gas in it, and take a chance of spilling it and stuff like that. We can just put fill up, fill up gas here, and then I'll have a switch on the dash, hit it, and it'll transfer the fuel from here into the little one. Okay, well, let me get that done and I'll be back. Might be tomorrow though. Okay guys, got it all in there. Kinda had to mount it like this because I had to get the bolt in there and there. Then I put the ground on there, but that's so it goes up into there. The tank and it comes from this tank. These are all new lines. So uh, I was gonna say do it tomorrow, but I think we'll wrap this video up because it took me an extra couple of days doing that front end, screwing around with it. Um, so next video we'll test out this pump we'll put a couple of gallons of gas in here uh put some power to this check out the pump make sure it's pumping into this tank um because you can't see through it but um i got i forgot about the dash wires about the wire here's the uh gas gauge for this i need to find the uh that needs to go up in there. I need to put a gas gauge on the dash for this tank. This tank here, the gauge works. Like I said, in the in the de in the truck gauges, which are mounted in this car. But for this one, we don't know. We don't even know if it's going to work. The gauge. It. But anyway, I need to find the wires to it. I got. And that's another thing that the guy sent me, the fuel pump, he sent me a gas gauge. Okay, right after I already bought one. <laughs> he knew exactly what I needed. See, I bought this one. And then a few days later, that one came. So either one... Um, but yeah, I'll be using all this stuff, and I know the fuel filters are for the uh, El Camino. Uh, but anyway, we'll hook up one of these gauges, figure out the wires there, which one is to the gas gauge. Uh, plus, I got some uh, buttons, electrical buttons, that are going to go in a little thing to mount them to. Uh, anyway, I'll show you all that next video, and we'll do some wiring get those switches in there 
get the electric fans hooked up because there I got a three panel switch switches two are gonna be for for the fans one and two fan and then the other one's gonna be for the fuel pump okay so uh, something happened here I busted that anyway I'll put some epoxy on that so yeah anyway when this video like that so um that'll be the next video plus probably a bunch more stuff there's just a whole bunch of stuff like this that I gotta do to it um start put oh yeah and we did I did even get my panels there finished got that header panel the uh fender patch and all that we'll do all that next video okay so uh like comment share subscribe all that stuff and uh we'll see y'all next video thanks everybody for watching